the outrun keeps audiences in sync with Sayers Ronan's inner life thanks to innovative sound. There's an easy cliched way to sound design drunkenness. According to re-recording mixer Gregor Bonds the film convention for conveying any sort of drug trip or inebriation is a step and repeat pattern of putting big reverb effects on key sounds and dialogue so that the scene in question feels unreal and detached. The sound tells us loudly and obviously that the characters are out of their minds. The approach can be great fun in a stoner comedy but can also put distance between the characters and the audience. However the pleasure and pain of Nora Fingscheid's film The Outrun is to stay fearlessly relentlessly achingly in the subjectivity of one-time biology PhD student Rona, say Iris Ronan, as she struggles with alcohol addiction and finding a direction for her life. The film's sound design accordingly doesn't make easy delineations between sober and not wounded or healed, even the sounds of Orkney and London the film's two core locations are blended to help the audience feel what Rona's experience actually is. There's an interior focus to the sound design that supervising sound editor Dominic Loop told often came down to using the right sounds at the wrong time. When Nora's on a drunken bender in London for instance the sound team wove in the sounds of waves and wind throwing in incongruous and asynchronous sounds to mimic fragments of memory snapping to the surface. The filmmakers gave us the freedom to play with these environments in a quite subjective manner Loop told. A lot of that sound specific subjectivity was built into Fing Scheidt's and Amy Liptrot's script and Liptrot's memoir. F.I.N.G. Scheidt in particular collaborated with Bonslub and fellow sound designers Oscar Stiebitz and Jonathan Shore as the script developed off of a scriptment or prose treatment of the film. They all collaborated on how sound could help bridge the gaps between time place and aspects of Rona's personality from her most painful recollections to what Lube called her nerd layers voiceovers that are fascinated with nature and science. Rona says that the screaming gulls on Orkney are sirens. The sea is traffic. She makes all these sonic comparisons between the two places and that laid the groundwork for us to back and forth in time with sound Lube said. Throughout the process of refining the screenplay we were able to add more of these ideas on how to transition between past and present and how we could go from Orkney to her past in London through sound bonds told. There was eventually a department head meeting just to see how the outrun could push sound to keep us anchored to Rona's subjectivity. I thought that was quite interesting that we were all able to contribute ideas. And Stefan Beckinger the editor and Roy Imer the cinematographer both also wanted to be inspired by how the film could sound Bonds said. We wanted Rona's drunk episodes to use asynchronicity as well as fragmentation and it was cool to have Stefan on board with that. But even in less obviously sound forward moments the sound is working to get us to feel the emotions that are churning like a tide inside Rona. During one sequence after watching her dad, Stephen Dillane suffer in the throes of a bipolar episode and seeing an abandoned glass of wine on the table in his caravan Bonds and Lube unleashed a huge outburst of tremor sounds. They're essentially her struggle against addiction and their intensely sound design Bonds said. Lube built a sample rig he could play live like a keyboard and combined psychologically resonant sounds for Rona to build those tremors, sounds of shaking and crumbling earth the noise of helicopter rotor blades the sound of metal chopping through the wind. In the face of that it's less surprising that Rona runs out of the trailer than that she stayed as long as she did. She battles against her instinct to go back in and have a relapse and as this battle ends it comes to a total silence Bonds said. She stands in front of the trailer and we see in her face that she's made a decision. Then she walks back inside and we know what that means. And at that point the score takes over. The outrun alternate sound and score or different varieties of subjective sound to give the audience a sense of Rona's emotional volatility without the film ever spelling out those moments. But it often required figuring out how to get the catharsis point right and then working backward to effectively build towards them. Some of the film's early delights are moments where we go from hearing house music through Rona's headphones to the peaceful nature sounds all around Ornkey or the reverse. But that fun interplay is weaponized later when Rona's demons come rushing at her in a way no headphones can muffle. Nora said we should be really careful in how we use sound before that moment in Orkney. We needed to take it easy so nature could sound really big Bonds said.